You try to find some categories that are needed in real life situations. The machine learning system was created to identify pictures that humans have a hard time figuring out. We decided to make categories of CT scans. We are using transfer learning and machine learning to, with the help of AliceNet to accurately assign different types of CT scan in the world. We chose three different lung issues and one healthy lung in this case. In the healthy lung column, we have lots of pictures of healthy lung. In another disease, we have another picture. In fibrosis, we have another picture. In sarcoidosis, we also have pictures. This is our training options. We have all our augmentation here. We can rotate it, flip it, change the zoom factor, change the initial learning rate, and so on. We can also browse the directory of the training data to see how many number of categories are there. These number of categories need to match the number of categories up here. Also, we can create a new folder and select that folder or other folders, and you can add pictures to existing folders in your categories. So the user can do that. Now let's press start training images. When we finish our uh, training test, then we can do now the accuracy test. Let's import the image. And we can modify them, 90 degrees and also the zoom factor of two. You can do that multiple times until you like it. You can also crop the image by X min, X max, Y min, and Y max. But if you don't like the modified image, you can revert back to the original image and you can do other modifications to it as well. Now you can test the accuracy. Now, if you want to classify multiple pictures, then you first need to create a new folder in classifying data. When you create a folder and classify data, it shows in here. You can add pictures to this image. One picture, the second picture, third picture, and the last picture. Then it will show the pictures to test in this order. Now we can create, click the prediction button and we'll do a prediction of what it would be. We can also clear the folder and you can do the steps again if you want other pictures to be tested. Second, lastly, the experiment section is there. You press the button first and then you click the experiment button. Then you'll see all the possible choices we made in our training options listed up here and also the accuracy. When you do the training options multiple times and classify multiple the same amount of pictures multiple times, then you get a list of, of trials you did. I did another one. If I press one more time, it will record another one. Our maximum we got was 68.44. All right, so here's our remote classification. Um, on our server side, we have to train the data first and then hit the start server button. So I'm going to click that. And then on our remote device, we have another app which lets you upload an image. So we're going to upload our remote image, which is a CT scan. And then that will get uploaded to Dropbox. And then now we can go back to our remote app and then hit classify. And then here, we can see it in real time, it's sending a request, uploaded the image, and now it's waiting for a response from our server. And then, boom, we have um, a response, pulmonary fibrosis, and we update the status field in ThinkSpeak back to zero. Hi everyone, this is our image classifier project. My name is William. My name is MinQ. I'm Diego, and I'll start us off with the code. So one of the buttons on the opening section of the GUI is a straight uh, start training is button, which will train the images using the retraining data function. We initialize some of the global variables using the user inputs and then assign those to the global variables. For the augmentation part of the function, we uh, checked whether the user had checked boxes for rotate 90, rotate 180, and rotate 270 as well as horizontal and vertical. And if they did, then those images were put into loops, which were then augmented and put into training images and training labels. And the same with the zoom, 
you use the IM resize and center crop window 2D to augment the images and then sort those into training images and training labels. And then those two variables that have been updated throughout all those loops have been put into train network and they're used to train the network. And then the comments below that is to check that the images in all the training data were actually augmented by displaying all of the pictures. On the first page, there's also a browse directory button, which allows you to see which uh, folders, which subfolders are being used to train data by selecting a path and then displaying that path on the table. And then the create new folder button allows you to create a new folder within the training data. And then the add pictures button allows you to put pictures into that new folder that you just created by assigning it a path and a directory and then writing that picture into the folder. The import images button are allowed to choose any file that you have in your library and it'll display that on the axis. And then the modifications button works a lot like the first page of the GUI where the user is able to augment their images. All those augmentations are displayed on the table. Now for the test accuracy button, we call the function to read retraining data from the math of code. We write the app.testing image into a PNG file, and then we read the PNG file and resize the PNG file into 227 by 227 so that the MATLAB uh, AlexNet can understand. We then classify this by the learned data with the tested image to find our prediction. We classify with our learned data with the test image to get our predicted labels, and we get the mean of the predicted labels that are equal to test labels that we show as accuracy. We then show our tested image in a separate tab, and our title of that would be prediction and accuracy with the number and the name of the prediction shown. We have a revert image button so that when we when the user can user modify the image too much, they can set it back to the original image. The create new folder button is in the third uh, tab. The user can make a new folder that is called classifying multiple pictures. And if that new folder does not exist, then we'll make a new folder inside the preferred tab. The add picture button is pushed when you want to add picture into this new folder that we created. The prediction button is also calls the function to re retrain data from MATLAB code, and it finds the path of the folder that we made. Then we use an if statement and an embedded if for loop to put the images into an array. We call this array training images. We classify the trained data with the training images and we show it as a title, the prediction and the what the prediction is going to be. Next, the button pushed in the fourth tab, the experiment tab, we make it read the table that we forcefully created called Excel one. When we push the experiment button, it adds a new row in the table containing all the values of the training options that we pressed or that we modified. We also have an accuracy button so that we can find the accuracy corresponding to what we pressed all of all the possible modifications. Then we will uh, put it in the new table and then the new row will be inserted every time you press the new experiment data. And the last part of our program is the remote classification. So we have a single button that says start server. And when that button is pressed, it reads the channel ID of our ThinkSpeak server. It reads the write key, the read key, and also the token for our Dropbox. The server waits until it gets a response from the remote device. And then when, it, when status is equal to one, then it downloads remote image.mat from Dropbox and then sends that resized image into our classify function. And then the classify function will give us a response which we can then send back to ThinkSpeak. So we use ThinkSpeak write to write the status and our response into the corresponding field. And for our remote device, so the first button, upload image, um, uses the token from Dropbox and then sends that to the upload to Dropbox function. And from there, you can choose which image you want to upload. And then the second button is called classify. Um, it reads the channel ID of our ThinkSpeak server, our write key and read key, and sets status equal to zero. Once our image is uploaded, then our server will classify that and then send a response back. So what the remote device uh, can do is take that response that it got from ThinkSpeak and then display it into our MATLAB command window.